What's up, everybody? It's been a while since I've posted a video of any kind. I have cut my hair, uh, gotten laid off, uh, found another job at Softer, um, done some, some of my own business stuff. Uh, all sorts of different things have happened since my last video, probably. Um, but I recently uh, came across an issue that I saw that a lot of people had questions about in regards to using Airtable and Softer and eliminating some of the the middle work that needed to be done in automation software uh, and um, thought that this would be a good thing for me to learn as well. So I've been diving into the world of Airtable scripting and ChatGPT has been an amazing help in that way. Um, and I just wanted to kind of share uh, the answer to something that I had always wanted to know about and that was how can I, um, aside from using something like Data Fetcher in Airtable, uh, how can I use the Adalo scripting to uh, reach out to an API and then get data back and actually save it in the database? So I've just got a very simple example here. Let's say, you know, um, in, in my case, maybe it's someone on Softer uh, signs up as a user and you want to automatically add them to your subscriber list, right? Um, this is, uh, this is pretty easy to do with scripting um, as long as you have a script that works for that. And luckily, I've got one that works pretty good. Um, I'll show you how to modify it here in just a second to, to match pretty much any API that you want to use. Um, and this will be covering strictly a post request to an API. So this is um, typically creating something uh, on an API, right? But it, 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 uh, the concepts hold true for uh, many other uh, many other things as well. So um, let me show you what I've got here. I've just got a scripting demo with some users. I've got Johnny Test, Master Chief, and Elmo. And uh, we're going to go to automations here. And let's say I wanted to set up an automation to uh, when a record is created, meaning when a user actually signs up or a user is created. Um, I want to uh, add them as a subscriber to MailerLite. Um, and if you know, software has a MailerLite kind of integration pre-built into it, but you can't actually assign it yet to um, when a user signs up, right? So one of the things that you can do is you can create a, an Airtable automation to handle this for you um, without increasing the, your tech stack or using Zapier or Make or anything like that. Those are, the, those are wonderful services. You can actually do this right here in Airtable automations. So I'm just going to set this... Uh, this to when a record is created. You could certainly use other triggers if you wanted to. Our table is just the user's table. Um, I'll just use whatever the suggested record is, but you'll want to make sure that you use a record that has all the data in it that you're wanting to use, um, that has all those fields filled out, and I do. So I've got the email, the name, the Airtable record, and then the Airtable ID right there, which is good. And then in this step here, I want to actually uh, run a script. Now you will need a paid seat in Airtable to access this feature. Um, but the nice thing about Softer is that you can just basically pay for one seat in Airtable. Um, and then through Softer you can have, uh, you know, 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 users, right? Um, which makes it really nice uh, to be able to edit your Airtable data. Okay. So before I get into this, let me uh, go over here and show you I have actually started, since I just started doing some scripting, uh, I have started a, a base here for some scripts. I think Airtable actually has one of these as well um, that you can go and explore. But this was one of the ones that I didn't, that I had I had to kind of piece together uh, from different, you know, different community posts and uh, different examples that were already provided. So I kind of had to piece this together. I'm not a coder, um, but... Uh, this, uh, this script works pretty good and I can read enough code to um, apparently make a YouTube video about it. So I'll go in here to run a script or we'll edit the code here. I'm just gonna take this out here and plug this in. Now this looks super crazy, but um, it's really not hard to, to, to get at. Um, and we actually don't even need these these two lines here. So what this is saying is, um, you can see over here, it says input variables let you use values from previous automation triggers and actions in your script. Okay, cool. So we are wanting to do this, right? We're wanting to take the user's name and their email and add them, use that Airtable data and send it to MailerLite. 
So I'm actually going to create two variables here. One is called uh, full name. And the value from this is just going to be from this step when a record is created, it's going to be this right here, this Johnny test, which is my test record. And then I'm going to add another variable here called email. And you guessed it, this one is going to be Johnny's email. All right, so I've got my two input variables here. Now I need to modify the script to match uh, the a what the API on MailerLite requires, okay? So there's a couple of different things here. One is that the body, full name and email, both of these need to match the parameters that are being asked of MailerLite. So if we go to the MailerLite um, documentation here, you can see that in this case, we're creating a post request. There's the, the URL, which we'll fill in in a second. But the parameters here are email, right? Um, and so that one is actually correct. If I go back to my script, you can see that email matches. It's case sensitive and everything. Um, but I don't have a full name field or even a name field. So this is actually going to be an object. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this. And I'm actually going to paste this. Oops, let me paste it right in here. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, add a kind of squiggly bracket here. I'm going to press the enter button, and then I'm going to add two quotes and a colon. And inside these two quotes, I'm actually going to put in, uh, if you, you can see right here, it says object keys must correspond to default or custom field name. Values can only be added this way and will not be removed by omission. So in the example here, you can see that we've got email. This is the one that we've already got, right? But this fields one, this is the one that we're wanting to add. So maybe um, we want to create uh, a field here called uh, just name, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here and we're going to, in inside this, I'm just going to put name, okay? And the way that we, we reference these is by, um, and if you click on this learn more, you can learn more about this, but it says you can use input variables in your code using input.config, okay? And so we're telling it, let this variable, input config, equal uh, those inputs that we've set up over here, okay? And it's just gonna create a JSON object out of these things. Um, and then what I get to do is I get to refer to this variable down here inside the value of this key. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, for, for their name, I want you to look at the input config, and the dot is dot notation for full name, which is this, this value right here, right? Um, and same thing for email. So I want you to look at the input config, drill down and get the email of that, uh, of that uh, JSON object that is input config, okay? So, We've got our variables there. Uh, I need to actually close close this as well. So let me just close this up. We'll put a comma in there. It's not pretty, but uh, it works. Um, and we should be good to go there. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to change this endpoint URL. Obviously, it's not endpoint URL. We need to actually copy it from here. So this is our, our URL that we're going to be pinging. Stick that right in there. The content type is application slash JSON. We'll just leave that there. That's pretty standard um, header. And the authorization, to learn more about this, each API is different, but to learn more about the authorization, we can probably go to get started and go to this authentication section here. And you can see that authorization is the name of the, the, uh, the header key and bearer and then our key here goes here, right? So I've got a key here already um, that I'm just gonna post in here. So I'm gonna leave all this the same. I'm just gonna change just this API key section here to the, the key that I've got available. So I'll hit Command A. All right. Let's erase this out. We'll paste in this, oops, didn't save it. Let's go back. Go here, copy. There we go. Super long key from MailerLite. Not all of these are that long, but that's uh, kind of what we're dealing with here. And then, uh, so this is the actual request 
to Mailer Light, right? We're sending it the body. It's referencing the body here, which is up here, which we've already determined. And we're sending it some headers and some uh, authentication things and different things like that. So the next part of this is we're going to uh, create a JSON object called response data. And we're going to await for the response that's returned here. And then we're going to actually set some some things for us to actually save as outputs from this step. So um, I know that one of the things that's returned by this particular API is this subscribers endpoint here. So you can see that right here in the response, I get all this crazy amount of data here. What I can do is I want to drill down and say, okay, give me the, uh, the data, right? Give me the data and the, the subscriber ID which is just going to be this kind of first value here, all right? So um, what I usually like to do is go in here and say, okay, this is going to be the name of the key that I reference within Airtable. So maybe this is the um, subscriber ID, all right? And you can make that what, pretty much whatever you want, okay? Um, or I'm sorry, this is, this is no, that's that actually goes down here. So the, the result is... is uh, we actually want to make this the let result equal. Um, yeah, we could call it subscriber ID. Um, okay, so so that's the response data, and then what we want to do is we want to actually drill down and get this data dot ID. All right, um, because that's the you know that's the uh, the keys there that are part of the response. So data and then dot, uh, this is actually an array. So we may, we may actually need to say, um, cause I think you can add, multi Oh, that's list. I'm sorry. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, so create a upsert subscriber. So it's actually just, yeah, data dot ID. Here we go. So there's no array there. Perfect. So we can keep that the same. And this part right here, output.set, this is something that is specific to Airtable. Output is telling Airtable, okay, I want the outputs. And then set is I am setting what that particular out, output is going to be. And I, I need to do this like per per output. So the key here that I want, want to display it as is this subscriber ID. And the result is just going to be result and then this right here what we've set right here so subscriber id and you could you could you could even just do like this right just id so result dot id okay so when we go to uh, con uh and then the console log this is just going to display it here in when we uh when we run the script so let me go ahead and test this and as with everything we will see if uh how good this is um so it it ran the it ran it and it looks like it is pulling Ooh, that's weird anyway very strange things happening there but it it pulled in the it, it was successful it added the uh the thing there now what we can do is we can finish editing and let's say that i want to then update that user with their subscriber id that was returned so maybe i would want to uh, go in here and add a single line text and just call this uh, mailer light mailer light subscriber ID right so I'll go back to my automation I can then update this record I will put in we can add a description later but it is the users table the record ID is going to be that when a user is created, it's going to be the that record ID, right? It's going to be the record ID from this from this first step here. The field here is going to be this mailer light subscriber ID. That's the one that I want to update, or that field is the one that I want to update. And then I get to choose what I want to put in that field. So if I click this plus sign, and then I go, I've got this new option here called run a script, and because I have that output uh, section there. I can actually get the subscriber ID from that script and save it, 
uh, to my Airtable base, right? Um, and then I can even generate a preview here. So you can see that MailerLite subscriber ID is there. Um, that works perfect. So uh, we should be good to go there, all right? And just to double check, we can go and let's look at some of my subscribers here. Let me go to MailerLite.com. We'll look at some subscribers. We can get this to load. Oh, great. All right. You can see I've got 10 total subscribers. There are a bunch of like test ones there before, but I can go to subscribers. And if I scroll, let's see, there's Johnny Test right there, right there in the middle. And if we want to click on him and just test to make sure it's the same, you can see up here in the URL that we've got. It begins in 746 and ends in 037. And we can check this here as well. Let's see, 746, 037. So that is how you can use uh, Airtable scripting to um, perform these, uh, these uh, automated kind of things directly in Airtable without having to go outside uh, of Airtable to do that. And this, this pretty much works for any HTTP REST API. Um, the most difficult thing is definitely kind of modifying the script to match what you need it to do. Uh, but once you kind of understand the structure and what has to change with the script, um, you can pretty much copy and paste that anywhere you need to perform those types of actions, all right? And of course, the last step here is to just turn this automation on. Um, I, let's, uh, let's just create a, a form view here and we'll just give this a live test, all right? So let's go to, we'll just remove this subscriber ID here. Let's go to open form. Let's test our big bird, big at bird.com. So we've submitted the form and then we can actually go and we can check the run, you know, if that automation uh, actually ran. So if I click on automations, then I click on this run history here, you can see that it ran successfully. It updated the record successfully and I can check it by going to the actual grid view. And you can see that there's Big Bird, there's his email, and then there's the MailerLite subscription ID that was returned, all right? So pretty cool stuff. Uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, I will post the a link to the uh, Airtable base of the script uh, of this script um, that you can kind of copy and modify and uh, and work along with. Uh, and I'll also be kind of experimenting more with scripting. And as I find out more examples and different things like that, I think I may just continue on the uh, building this uh, that per that particular base out. Uh, this Airtable scripts base out so that everyone can have access to it. So um, I'll share this. Uh, a quick note about this is that if you try to use this in an extension, um, you're probably going to get a something like a, a, a cores error or something like that. And that is because in automations, automations only support this fetch um, uh, function here. Um, they do not support um, what... Uh, Airtable would, would call remote fetch. Uh, I forget what they call it. Uh, anyway, it's something called remote, remote fetch async, I think is what they call it. Um, but remote fetch, uh, this does kind of that automatically, right? Um, and really the only difference is that uh, fetch in this case is used um, when it's used by automations, it's used by Adalo's servers. When you use an extension here, it's actually using your browser uh, to execute the script as opposed to using um, an Airtable server to do it. Um, but that's another story for another time. So just something to know about that. This script will only work in automations. If you need to use this script outside of that, um, you can simply remove the, the output sections and um, switch the fetch to that remote fetch async function. All right. So uh, that's pretty much it. Long-winded, kind of complicated, but hopefully it helps somebody uh, later on in the future.